Hey guys, by popular request, I'm going to be reviewing the stock of Kohu. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I do a lot of stock analysis here on the channel. So if you like that kind of thing, hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this one. Alright, let's get started. Alright guys, so I'm here on Kohu's website. They operate in a very interesting business. They're a leader in semiconductor and PCB testing and inspection. So this is not a company that markets to consumers. You can really see that if you do an internet search. I just typed in Kohu and pretty much all of the links here are about Kohu stock. There is really not much talk about their actual business. Kohu stock is doing very well though. It's up about 160% over the past year. It's currently trading about 12 times the experience earnings, which is a very attractive valuation. And the market cap is a little bit less than $2 billion. Here is a little breakdown of Kohu's revenue. As you can see, the vast majority coming from semiconductor testing and inspection. As far as the region, they have a lot of diversification. 23% coming from China, 17% from the US, and the rest of it pretty spread out there, a lot of Asian countries. It's also nice to see they have order backlog there, and this is in millions of dollars, so you're looking at about $237 million worth of semiconductor test and inspection order backlog. Now for the year 2020, they did not report any major customer accounting for 10% or more of their revenue, but it is worth noting in 2019, Intel was about 11% of their total revenue, and that is something to consider. Here's Kohu's balance sheet. Leverage is pretty darn low there. As you can see with the debt to assets ratio of just about 17%. No liquidity problems there. Current ratio above 3. Very safe. Check out the description below for the formulas for all of these by the way if you don't know any. Interest coverage ratio is really the only area for concern there. That is a little bit low. I hope they can grow their earnings to improve that ratio. We're going to have to see about their growth. As long as they're growing, I would not be concerned about this ratio. Otherwise, I would be concerned. They're very liquid though. They have 23% of their assets are just plain cash. Only 46% are long-term assets. So, very nice balance sheet for Kohu. Here is their growth over time. They had some stumbles there at the beginning of the last decade, but they've really hit their stride here and they're growing revenue pretty rapidly. Alright guys, what we're looking at here is a vertical analysis for Kohu. This is where we take a series of income statements and we divide every single number by the revenue in that year. So everything's a percent of revenue. What I notice is an increase in gross profit margin from about 35% up to about 44%. So they're getting more efficient. This has led to an increase in the operating margin and ultimately an increase in the bottom line there, net income. So they've had their bumps with net income, but as you can see, 4.3% most recently going in a good direction. So to help us forecast the kind of profits Kohu is going to be making, I want to use the most recent data we have because again, they are growing, they're undergoing changes right now. So I'll use the quarter ending March 2021. I got revenues of about $225 million. Let's see how much they raked in in profit off of those revenues. And as you can see here, their total profit's about $27.6 million. So we're looking at a profit margin of about 12.3%. 
All right, guys, it's that time again. Let's use an intrinsic valuation model to figure out what is a fair price for Kohu stock. I'll be using the free cash flow to equity model, and I'm going to show you guys the value using several different required rates of return. I'll let you decide for yourselves. Let's walk through the spreadsheets. You can see all of my assumptions. All right, so here's the plan for Kohu. I plugged in the revenue estimates from Seeking Alpha, and those only last for the next three years. After that, we don't have any estimates. Again, smaller cap company and not going to have a big analyst following. So after year three, I just plugged in 2% growth going forward. So if that's true, the revenue of about $700 million today is supposed to grow to about $1.1 billion in 10 years. Seems reasonable to me. Now given those revenues, how much are our profits going to be? Well, that depends on the margins. Remember, this quarter was about a 12.3% margin. I'll be a little conservative and just go with 10%. Let's say for 2021 as a whole, they get 10% margins and then they're able to increase them from there as they gain economies of scale. So I have the margins going up and kind of topping out at 14%. The last step is reinvestment needs. So I will assume the first year here, they got to reinvest every single dollar. After that, I have reinvestment needs dropping off substantially. If you look at their history of reinvestments, I don't think this is out of line. This is not a company with heavy capex or that engages in big acquisitions. So that being said, that gives us a stream of free cash flows. Let's see what the company is worth given these cash flows. All right, guys, so as far as the terminal value, that's the value left over after 10 years. Obviously, we're not assuming the company just shuts down after 10 years. Essentially, we will assume that after the 10th year, they can grow cash flows perpetually at about 2% per year. So given those assumptions and everything we went through, the company has a range of values depending on what your discount rate is, what is your required rate of return. So I'm going to show you guys what is the intrinsic value for discount rates ranging from 7 to 10%. Basically, it's a good deal unless you need a 10% return. Then it's a little overvalued there. Otherwise, a good deal. It is something to think about though, a company that's this small does carry some extra risk and so a lot of people would say, yeah, I need at least 10% return on that. If you're enjoying the content so far, please smash that like button. It really helps to support the channel. Thanks guys. All right, last piece of information is insider trading data. In the past three months, you got more insiders selling than buying. Let's see about the number of shares. And so, yeah, close to three times the number of shares sold compared to bought. However, it is worth noting that insiders are generally going to be net sellers of the stock. So we do expect some baseline level of selling. It's nice to see that some of them are actually buying. So I honestly, I view this as pretty neutral. No information here. All right, guys, here are my final thoughts on Kohu. Uh, really nice balance sheet. Very safe in that respect. But it is a small cap stock. It is going to be a little more volatile. Um, intrinsic valuation would say to probably buy it unless you are requiring a 10% or more return per year. I think with the assumptions I'm plugging in, there is a little room for upside. You know, margins might be better than I'm thinking they're going to be. And so, you know, for me, I think I will buy Kohu stock. I generally like the business. They're involved in the semiconductor business. 
but they're doing the testing for it so they're not in the hyper competitive space of selling semiconductors so you know i'm a big fan of boring businesses and this one sounds really boring so i'm going to be buying some let me know what you're going to do in the comments below always like to hear from you guys thanks for watching